please take note that these questions do carry on um, on the next slide. So here's the next question and the next one and the last one. Okay, so those are the different questions that we're going to do. I just couldn't fit everything onto one slide. The first question says, well, let's first see what they say. In the diagram, PK is a tangent. Okay, fantastic. So that's a tangent. Uh, chord LS, blah, 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 respectively. Okay, they said that these lines are parallel. Okay, they've shown us that, so that's nice. And then the chords intersect at T. Okay, so the first question for four marks, prove that K4, so where's K4? K4 is here is equal to angle N M L. Where are you? N M L. Oh, okay. So that's that whole angle. Okay. So when I see K4, I know that that's a tangent. So I can use the tan chord theorem because this is the tangent and this is the chord. So what I can do is I can take that chord and try to make any other angles in the circle. So for example, I can go like that, okay? So that means that this angle, S1, is the same as K4 because of the tan chord theorem. So we can say that S1, angle S1, is the same as angle K4, and that's because of the tan chord theorem. Okay, so now we know that this, and then if you look here, these two parallel lines, we know that this angle would be the same as this angle, so we could say that S1 is going to be the same as they called this NMO, NMO, and that's going to be because of corresponding angles, corresp angles, and that's because NM is parallel to KS. Okay, and so there we go. We've done it because we said that uh, we said that K4 is equal to S1, but S1 is equal to that. That means therefore that these two must be the same. So we can say, therefore, K4 must be the same as NML. And there's no reason for that. That's just based upon what we've already shown previously. Next one, prove that KLMN, KLMN, okay, so where are you, KLMN? KLMN, prove that it's a cyclic quad. Well, this is for one mark. And you know why, guys? Because it's so easy. We already proved that this angle is the same as this angle. So that's exterior angle of a cyclic quad. So we can say um, K4 is equal to NMO, and that we already proved. So we can then say, therefore, KLMN is cyclic. Why? And the reason that we can say it's a cyclic quad is because the exterior angle of this quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. Okay, so remember what we've proven so far, that this is a cyclic quad. I don't know, maybe we'll need that a little bit later. For five marks, prove that triangle LKN I'm actually going to get rid of the cyclic quad. We'll just have to remember that. So LKN, so LKN. Prove that that triangle is similar to KSM. So we want these two triangles to be similar. Earlier, we, earlier on, we proved that this was a cyclic quad, remember? So because it's a cyclic quad, it means that if something is a cyclic quad, you can also use this type of theorem where you can say that this angle is the same as this angle because of angles in the same segment. Remember, if it's a cyclic quad, you can do that. So if you had to start at this line over here, then you could make this angle and you could also make this angle. Okay. See, because if I put my two fingers there, for example, and if I had to go this way, then it would get there. And if I had to go this way, whoops, no, that doesn't, that's not when I was going. <laughs> uh, if I had to go that way, then it also makes that, okay? So those two angles will be the same. So this angle and this angle. So we can say that M3, M3 is equal to N3, and that's just because of angles in same segment. 
Now I'm just going to draw that cyclic quad again. Geez, like they're using the cyclic quad a few times actually. Alright, so in triangle LKN, LKN, uh, we know that angle L, which is this one, must be the same as angle K in KSM. Okay, so we know that these two angles need to be the same. Okay, so we know that this angle needs to be the same as that angle. Now, I couldn't see a direct link between them. There is no direct link between them. But what we can see is that these two lines are parallel, right? So if you use alternating angles over here, let me do that a bit better, then it means that angle M2 is going to be the same as angle K2, okay? So we can say that angle M2 is the same as angle K2, and that's because of alt angles, and that's because the line KS is parallel to MN. Okay, so, so, so this angle is the same as this angle. But now, if I use the cyclic quadrilateral that we proved earlier, and specifically if I focus on KN, and I use angles in the same segment, that KN actually makes this angle if you look carefully, it makes that angle, but it also makes this angle. If I use this side of the cyclic quad and I and I try to make angles in the same segment, it makes L1 and it makes M2. So we can say L1 is equal to M2, and that is because of um, angles in the same segment. So then what that means is that um, we said that, see, angle M2 is the same as K2, but angle L1 is also the same as angle M2. And so from this, we can say that angle K2 is the same as angle L1. So K2 is the same as angle L1. So they, they are the same as each other. This is quite a difficult similarity, I will not lie. Okay, so we've got that. And so now we just need the last one. So um, now we need to just choose the last angles that we haven't used yet. So in this triangle, KSM, we haven't used... We haven't used this whole S, so we can say um, K, S, M, that angle, is going to be the same as this angle K over here, which we can call that angle L, K, N. So L, K, N. Now remember, the reason for this last angle, that I didn't even have to go and do anything, I just said that they're equal to each other, is because it's the sum of angles in a triangle. Okay, so there we go. We've gone and proved that all of these angles or all the angles in these two triangles are the same. And so we can now say that they're similar. So I'll do that now. That was actually one of the most, I think that's the most difficult similarity question I've seen. Um, that was quite a challenging one. So we can then say, therefore, LKN, triangle LKN, sorry, is similar to triangle KSM, and the reason is going to be angle, angle, angle. Now remember this for the next question. Remember that we've proven these similar, because what a good idea is, is in the next questions, they're probably going to do some weird stuff. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, okay, so they're doing some interesting stuff in the next question. So let's remember that we've proven that these are similar, so that we can use the, um, the ratios. You know the ratios that we normally do for similarity? that usually is needed to solve the next questions. Okay, so I just want to remind ourselves that we've done triangle K, oopsie, Kevin, triangle L, K, N, and we said that that was similar to triangle K, S, M. K, S, M, L, K, N, and K, S, M. Okay, so let's remember that. So in the next question it says that if L, K is 12, and 3KN is equal to 4SM. Okay, we'll remember that just now. Determine the length of KS. So what I go do now immediately, uh, yeah, we can fill it on the diagram if you guys want to. So that's 12. And then I would turn this into a little proportion. So I would say that KN over SM is going to be the same as, uh, KN over SM is going to be the same as 4 over 3. KN over SM yeah, 4 over 3. So, but this is a ratio now. So for the ratio, I would go fill it in on my diagram as like 4x, for example. And then SM is 3x. Okay. But what I would then do is I'd go straight to this that we learned about or that we found in the previous question. And I would make my um, ratios. So I'd do that. 
and then that. And then you must give a reason for this, and here you can just say similar triangles. Yeah, there are other reasons as well. Um, sometimes I say corresponding sides in proportion, things like that. Okay, so what I would then do is I'd go fill in whatever they've given us. So we know that LK is 12. Uh, KS, do we know anything about KS? Uh, no, we don't. So that's okay, we just go fill that in. KN, yes, we know that that is 4X. SM, oh lovely, we know that that's 3X. Oh, we don't even have to go further. We don't need to know what LN is uh, or KM because check this out. See guys, this is what I'm trying to show you, is that most of these questions can be solved by using the previous similarity. Okay, and so now we can just go do some solving over here. So I know that uh, this x, they would cancel out, and so I'll do cross multiplication. So 12 times three would go there, and then, whoops, and then four times ks would go over there. And so then if I had to get ks by itself, I would end up with ks as 9. And so I'm just going to fill that in. Ks, the whole of Ks is 9. And let's still remember guys that we have proved that LKN, triangle LKN, was similar to triangle KSM. Okay, and um, I'm going to make our ratios anyway, just in case. You would have had them written down in your paper like in your exam, you would have had them on your paper from the previous question, uh, but obviously I always have to erase this the whole time. Okay, now they say, if it is further given that NL is 16, okay, so N now sometimes they're going to go into a brand new, um, they're going to go into something completely different and we won't use this, but let's see. So NL is 16, okay, so NL, okay, there's NL, okay, so that's 16. Uh, LS, sure, so many different lengths, guys. LS, Okay, we know that LS, maybe I shouldn't highlight everything. LS is 13. Um, okay, I'm thinking a bit of a proportionality vibe coming on here because there's parallel lines. Um, KN, KN, where are you, KN? Oh, KN is, f okay. So we know that KN was 4X, but we also know that KN is now 8. So can you see there that um, X is 2? So then that means that this length here would be 6 because they told us that earlier. We don't even have to show that. Um, this is eight. They told us earlier that KN over SM was in the ratio of four parts to three parts. So that's eight and six now, so that's great. Okay, so it says, uh, okay, we've got everything. KN is eight. Now it says, determine the length of LT. LT. Okay, so LT is over there. Okay, so this is actually very straightforward. Look at this, guys. In this triangle here, we've got two parallel lines, so we can use the proportionality theorem. So what we can then say is that, for example, LN, because we have that length, so we could say LN over TL, for example, because that's what we're looking for. Let's actually start with TL. So we can say TL over the whole length of NL, which we do have, is then going to be equal to LS over the whole of its length, which is LM. So I'm just using proportionality theorem there. And so the reason you can give is line, parallel, side of triangle, and that is because NM is parallel to TS. And so we can say TL over uh, 16 is equal to LS, which is 13, over LM, which is 19. Okay, and then we can just do some normal solving, and if you solve for TL, you should end up with 208 over 19, or in decimal form, you could say 10,95, 10,95.